sixth grade, module five, lesson one, problem seven. Draw and label the height of each parallelogram. So here we're just drawing and labeling the height. So remember to find the height, what we're going to do is find a perpendicular line that connects the base to the opposite side of the parallelogram. So right here, there is nothing We need to extend the base out because when we bring this down, so that creates a perpendicular line, a right angle right there. So the height would be right here. Or you could do it on the other side. So on this one, I'll do it on the opposite side. So number two, instead of doing it on the right side, I'll show you how you can do it on the left side as well. So we'll bring it all the way out and then up. So we create a perpendicular line, it's right angle. So then the height is right here. So you just measure that height to find the height of the parallelogram. Number three, now we're gonna actually calculate the area of each par parallelogram. The figures are not drawn to scale. So it's nice they've already measured for us. So we need base times height is equal to area. So here the base is 13, the height is six. So 13 times six will be equal to the area. Let's do 13 times six is equal to 78. So then our label is centimeters squared. Number four. So our base, remember it's base times height is equal to area. So our base is one and two tenths feet times the height. So we need to decide, is it 13 and four tenths or 12 and eight tenths? Well, it's gonna be 12 and eight tenths because that is where we find the actual height with the perpendicular lines. So times 12 and eight tenths. So let's go ahead and multiply. 12 and 8 tenths times 1 and 2 tenths. 8 times 2 is 16. Carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And 2 times 1 is 2. Get rid of what I carried. Put my 0 down. 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. Add it all together. And then remember there are, we multiply decimals, so there are two digits behind a decimal point, so I need to move my decimal point over two places, so I end up with 15 and 36 hundredths feet squared. Number five, so remember it's base times height is equal to area. So our base, of the actual parallelogram is two and a half inches. We really don't need that information. I think that's just there to try and trick you. That's the length of this, but we don't need to know that. We just need to know the length of the base. The height is right here, five and one fourth inch. So let's do two and a half times five and one fourth. So I'm going to make them into, um, you can do the box method. You can uh, make them into improper fractions. That's what I'm going to do. So this would be five halves times 21 fourths. So it's really important to remember everything that we learned earlier in the year and in fifth grade, because it all comes back. So five times 21 would be 105 and 2 times 4 is 8 and then I'm just going to divide that to get my mixed number. So 8 can't go into 1 but it goes into 10 once. So we get 25. 8 goes into 25 3 times. That would be 24. We get a remainder of 1. So we're gonna get 13 and one left over out of eight. So we get 13 and one eighth. Well, 
what's our label? Inches squared. Okay, let's do another one. Number six. So the base times the height is equal to area. So here the base is just this part right here. Four and one third. We don't need this three and five six. So we have four and one third. times the height, which is this right here, three and a half. So let's make them into mixed numbers. Four times three would be, so remember we take the base, or we take the whole number, multiply it by the base, would be 12, and then add the numerator. So 13 thirds, the, new, the denominator stays the same, times the whole number times two would be six, plus, one is seven halves. So 13 times seven is 91. And three times two is six. So 91 sixths. We need to make that back into a mixed number. So let's do 91 divided by six. Nine goes into six, or six goes into nine once. We have 31, 6 goes into 31 5 times, because 5 times 6 is 30. So we have a remainder of 1, so 15 and 1 left over out of 6. So our answer is going to be 15 and 1 6 meters squared. Number seven, Brittany and Sid were both asked to draw the height of a parallelogram. Their answers are below. So here, Brittany drew the height right here. So she found a perpendic perpendicular line between the base, the two different bases. And then Sid did the same thing, but he just did it on the right side. So they're both correct. It's kind of like what we did up in numbers one and two. So we did one on the left side, one on the right side, but either way, you're finding the height, so it works, so they're both correct. So let's explain, they are both correct. Because their heights represent a line segment That is perpendicular to the base. We can expand it and whose endpoint is on the opposite sides of the parallelogram. Number eight, do the rectangle and parallelogram below have the same area? Explain why or why not. Okay, so the rectangle we know would just be 15 times eight, base times height. Um, this parallelogram here, so the base is 15, the height is eight. So again, we would do 15 times eight. So yes, they would have the same area because technically, if you look at it, remember you can take this piece off And if we move, were to move it over here, it fits perfectly right there, which makes your rectangle. So these are the same area. So let's say, yes, they have the same area. Because if we cut off the
right triangle. Let's say the right triangle, this one on the left side. And move it to the right side. We have a rectangle with the same dimensions as the other one. And number nine, a parallelogram has an area of 20 and 3 3 tenths centimeters squared and a base of two and a half centimeters. Write an equation that relates the area of the base and height h. Solve the equation to determine the height of the parallelogram. Okay, so remember, area is equal to base times height. So here we have the area. So 20 and 3 tenths is equal to base is two and a half centimeters times we don't know the height. So two and a half so what we're going to do, we can solve this equation by doing 2 and a half h divided by 2 and a half. So what we do on that side, we must do on the other side. So let's do 20 and 3 tenths divided by 2 and 5 tenths. So to start, since we're dividing decimals, I'm going to make this a whole number by moving it over one place. Do the same thing on this side and then move it directly up. And we no longer need to worry about the decimal place. So how many times can 25 go into 2? 0. How many times can 25 go into 20? 0. How many times can 25 go into 203? So, well, tw 25 could go into 200 eight times. No. So that would be 200. So if we subtract, we have 3 left over. And there's nothing to put behind the decimal point. We just have a remainder, so 8 and 3 25ths. But what I notice is these are in decimal form. This is in fraction form. So in order to make this into a fraction, I'm going to take 3 25ths and make it out of 100 because I can easily multiply 25 times 4 and 3 times 4. So it's really 8 and 12 hundredths, which is easy to write as 8 and 12 hundredths. So I can replace it with area is equal to base times height, or 20 and 3, was it centimeters? Yep, centimeters squared is equal to 2 and 5 tenths centimeters times 8 and 12 tenths centimeters. So 8 and 12 tenths, tenths centimeters is the 